Today, food safety is an important issue. The general public both expects and demands that the food they purchase is free from harmful contaminants and dangerous bacteria. Consequently, many regulatory standards and systems have been put into place to ensure the safety of our nation's food supply. Food safety audits are performed throughout the food chain to ensure that food is grown, harvested, packed, stored, and shipped in a manner to ensure that our food stays safe from the farm field all the way to the final retail sale. As an important part of the food chain, it's critical for you as farmers and packers to ensure that your product is grown and packed as safely as possible. There are food safety audits specifically designed for this part of the food chain. There are different audits that are widely used and accepted in the United States as well as around the world. These audits are provided by both private contractors and state and federal agencies. Additionally, your buyers may require a farm or packer to receive specific audits to meet the standards of their particular food safety program. So as a grower and packer, you must have a food safety plan of action, which includes documentation that your plan is actually being carried out. One way to achieve this is by developing a food safety quality manual. Each quality manual should be designed and implemented in a way that it addresses all the questions required by a third-party food safety audit. This video will give you some basic guidelines on how to design a food safety quality manual that will lead you through a successful food safety audit. Not all audits have the same required policies, so your quality manuals should cover the required policies of each specific audit. Specific documents will need to be on hand during audits to address whatever questions that specific audit covers. Examples may include documents covering water quality test results, shipping and receiving invoices, chemical labels, and training verification. Daily reports should be on hand for the verification of required activities such as washing, sanitizing, pH test, bathroom cleaning, field activities, and chemical applications. There are several important areas of focus for field operations and field packing. These can include documentations of training on the health and hygiene of the workers, field sanitation units, soil quality test, water quality test, the presence of domestic animals, wild animals, and livestock, chemical applications, and the actual field harvest. Let's go over each of these. Health and hygiene policies should be established by the facility and used to train all personnel regarding all proper personal health and hygiene practices. This could include policies covering hand washing, sickness, blood and bodily fluids, first aid, and the disposal of contaminated product. Toilet facilities must be readily available for all workers. If there are no toilet facilities available, a field sanitation unit must be provided. The number of such units and the condition and placement of these units must comply with all applicable state and federal regulations. Soap, potable water, and paper towels must be on hand for proper personal hygienic practices. Signs instructing employees of these hygienic practices should be placed on each field sanitation unit. Field sanitation units must be cleaned and restocked with soap, water, and paper towels on a daily basis. The suitability of the soil needs to be examined. A previous land use risk assessment must be performed on all fields. If previous land use indicates a possibility of contamination, what preventative measures have been taken to mitigate the known risk? Has the soil been tested for contaminants, and is the land use appropriate considering the test results? Have the crop production areas been subjected to flooding? If so, have the areas been tested for potential microbial hazards? Water quality tests are important. Identify all sources of irrigation water used. Does the water come from ponds, streams, wells, municipal supplies, or some other source? A water quality assessment should be performed to determine if its quality is appropriate for irrigation and chemical application. All water sources must be protected from potential contamination and should be tested on at least an annual basis. 
are domestic animals or livestock present in or near the growing fields. Crop production areas should not be located near or adjacent to any animal production facilities unless proper barriers exist and prevent all livestock entry. All crop production areas should be monitored for the presence or signs of wild or domesticated animals. In the case that animals are gaining access to a growing area, actions need to be taken to reduce or stop access to the area. Chemical applications must be monitored and documented. All crop applications should be documented and used according to the label. All applications should be performed by personnel that are trained and licensed by the proper state authorities. And finally, policies should be documented that cover the actual field harvest. There should be documentation to show that all employees have been properly trained on food safety and the proper handling of the product that employees have been instructed not to pick up any product that has fallen on the ground, that during mechanical harvesting, measures are taken to inspect the product for and remove foreign objects, such as glass, metal, rocks, or other dangerous items. All harvesting containers and hauling vehicles that contact the product should be cleaned and sanitized on a scheduled basis. Harvesting containers should not be used for carrying or storing anything other than product, all hand harvesting equipment, such as knives, pruners, and shears, should be kept clean and disinfected on a scheduled basis. Only new or sanitized containers should be used for packing the product. Damaged containers should be properly repaired or disposed of. Field packing material should be properly stored and protected from possible contamination. Packing containers should not contact the ground during harvest. Harvested product being moved from the field to storage should be covered during transport. Product moving from the field should be uniquely identified to enable traceability. Potable water must be available to all employees. There are several additional areas of focus for packing facilities. These include personal health and hygiene, general facility housekeeping, product handling practices, water quality, refrigeration, transportation, pest control, and traceability. Let's go over each of these. Policy should be established by the facility and used to train all personnel regarding proper personal health and hygiene practices, such as hand washing, sickness, first aid, blood and bodily fluids, hair nets and beard nets, and disposal of contaminated product. There should be stated policies about the general housekeeping of the packing facility. The facility ground should be well maintained, free from litter and standing water. Outside garbage cans should be closed and located away from the entryway. The facility interior should be clean and maintained in an orderly manner. Pipes, ducts, Fans and ceilings over product handling areas should be clean. Employee facilities and break rooms should be clean and located away from the packing area. Glass material, such as light fixtures above the production area, should be contained in case of breakage. Chemicals not approved for use on product should be stored away from packing areas. Only approved food grade lubricants should be used in the packing facility. Potable water must be available to all employees. All machinery should be properly serviced and maintained in a way that it cannot contaminate the product in any way. For example, hydraulics, forklifts, and motors must not be leaking fluids. All restrooms should be cleaned, sanitized, and stocked with toilet paper, soap, and paper towels on a scheduled basis. Handling practices are important. All employees should be properly trained on food safety and the proper handling of the product. Source water for the packing facility should be potable. All product coming from the field or being staged for packing should be placed in an area that protects it from possible contamination from birds, dust, dirt, and rain. All food contact surfaces such as the packing line, dump takes, and hydro coolers should be well maintained cleaned and sanitized prior to packing. All packing containers should be new and stored in a way that prevents possible contamination. 
No packing container should be used to store personal items or anything other than product being packed. No packing containers should be used if they have ever been stored improperly or contaminated by dust, dirt, or debris. Employees should be instructed on what to do with product that has been dropped on the floor. Employees should be following all policies regarding personal health and hygiene, hair nets and beard nets, and jewelry. Product packing areas should not be subject to possible contamination from cobwebs, hanging insulation, bird nest, or anything above the packing areas. Water quality for packing should be monitored. Water used for cooling or making ice should be potable. Water treatments and exposure time for the product should be monitored and the facility should demonstrate that it is appropriate for the product. Refrigeration is very important. Climate controlled rooms should be monitored for temperature and thermometers should be checked for accuracy. Refrigeration condensation should not come in contact with the product. Transportation is a concern. Trucks and trailers must be clean, in good physical condition, free from odors, dirt, and debris. The product should not be loaded onto trucks or trailers which also carry possible contaminants like seafood, meat, or chemicals. Transportation vehicles should be loaded to minimize damage to the product and refrigerated trucks or trailers are required to maintain a temperature range specific to the product being transported. Measures must be taken to exclude animals or pests from the facility. There needs to be an established pest control program in place. Service reports for the pest control program should be available. Interior walls, floors, doors, and ceilings should be well maintained and free from major cracks and crevices. Bait stations should be placed around the outside perimeter and rodent traps should be placed around the inside perimeter. Finally, records must be kept to ensure the traceability of the product, which includes the source of incoming product and the destination of outgoing product. These records should uniquely identify the product for traceability. Through this video, we hope that you understand a little more about food safety practices that can be easily implemented on a farm or packing facility. There are a variety of food safety audits that may be required before your product can be sold. As a result of completing a food safety audit, this will increase market opportunities and avenues to sell your product. In addition, it is our hope that you understand the importance of developing a food safety program at your farm or operation. These audits focus on best agricultural practices to verify that fruits and vegetables are produced, packed, handled, and stored in the safest manner possible to minimize risk of microbial food safety hazards. By implementing a food safety plan, precautionary measures have been taken to reduce contamination and the chances of a foodborne illness outbreak. The United States has the safest food supply in the world Let's continue on this journey to provide ourselves, our community, our state, and our nation with top quality cuisine.